Hi, welcome to Pico Playtime, the video series where I play through some cool Pico games to show to you lovely people. Today we've got a game called Star Gunner by Bruno Gelé. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I apologise if not. Anyway, let's load it up. Oh, let's actually get focus on the window first. There we go. So, Star Gunner. It's a, what would you call it, a D-make? I don't like that word. Remake, part, whatever you like. It's a remake of Star Gunner, originally by Telesis Software. Um, originally for the Atari 2600. So it's a um, classic, classic shooting game um, from 1982. This is a remake on Pico 8. Now, I've never heard of Star Gunner before this, but I thought straight away, well, this looks like a remake. So I found out a little bit about Star Gunner. Um, it is or it is a horizontally scrolling shooter. Yes, it is. Uh, written by Alex Levens and published by Telesis in 1982. Uh, Levens also worked on parts of Garth and Crazy Climber for the 2600. Um, so yeah, that's straight from Wikipedia, the sum of all human knowledge. Um, Video Games Player Magazine, in August, September 1983 issue, called Star Gunner a better-than-average outer space shoot 'em up game. Um, Bruno, on the other hand, claims that it was rated as the worst Defender clone on the Atari 2600. So, maybe it's somewhere in the middle, a completely average Defender clone. Who can tell? Uh, anyway, it's a remake. We're going to get playing soon. Now, being an old kind of... I mean, it's not an arcade game, I sp uh, strictly speaking, but it's kind of like an arcade game, isn't it? It's got an attract mode. So whilst that's going on, let's crack open the pointless can of energy drink. Today we have got Red Bull Coconut. Yeah, they do a coconut flavour Red Bull. Um, coconut and berry. I'm not sure those two flavours go together. Anyway... Um, let's read the side of the can as, as is tradition. So Red Bull, the coconut edition. Appreciated worldwide by top athletes. I count myself as a top athlete. Students, not anymore. And in highly demanding professions, reviewing Pico 8 games is quite demanding. Um, as well as during long drives. Okay. Energy drink with the taste the taste of coconut. There is, they're making, making it very clear that there is not necessarily any coconut in this drink. It's the taste of coconut and berry. Not sure what berry it is. It could be any kind of berry, couldn't it really? A strawberry, a raspberry, a lingonberry, a blueberry, a blackberry. There's many berries. It tastes of all of them. It's not recommended for children, pregnant women, consume moderately. Well, I'm going to drink the entire can. Um, it vitalizes body and mind. Let's see if the high caffeine content of coconut Red Bull helps me play better at this game. Right, well that does taste of coconut and berry, so there you go. Mission accomplished, Red Bull. I don't think the berry really brings anything. I'd rather just have coconut. Oh well. It's quite nice though. Right, let's um, get started then. So. We have to stop the invasion of the Sphysogy and score as many points as you can. Good to know. Oh, I was reading that. Yeah, these are trapped modes. Don't you remember having to... Well, I say remember. Uh, are you aware of the <laughs> old arcades where you would not have any money because your mum wouldn't give you any and you have to sit watching the attract mode all day? You do this shooting by avoiding bombs and gunning down the alien saucers and creatures... We'll come back round. So yeah, this is the kind of arcade game that I I like. It's one of the many arcade games that I like. Here we go, let's try it again. The space buzzes and squeezes, those are those colourful fellows there, but don't collide with them or let them rematerialise at your location or you'll lose a ship. There you go, we know what the score is now. Mm. Right, let's get cracking then. So... Oh, let's get a focus on the window. There we go. That's in the original, by the way. Um, I've not played the original. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos of people playing the original. And the little Beethoven's Fifth Symphony thing, riff, 
that's in the original. Um, so, yeah, is this a faithful clone, copy, part, remake, demake? Sure, I think it's pretty faithful. Um, I mean, having not played the game, but watching other people play the original, there's only a couple of things I, I can notice that are different. Other than that, yeah, it seems pretty close. So, yeah, fantastic work on that front. You've made yourself a copy of a game. An interesting, an interesting little challenge, I suppose, because, you know, you're trying to get it as close to the original as you can. Nice little programming challenge there, I like it. Um, as you can see, didn't do very well in that. Talking and getting immediately blown up. So, the, it is a Defender clone. We can move our ship side to side, the screen wraps. Um, we can only go to a certain point at the bottom of the screen. We have this rather odd looking blue and pink thing at the top of the screen. I believe that's the Aryan Mothership. Uh, we can't do anything about that. It's, that's as high as my ship goes. So we can't do anything about that. That's just going to be there all, the, all through the game. Um, killing us like that. What we can do something about though are the aliens. These little, well these are kind of funny squares. Now, if this were just a um, standard peek away game, I'd be complaining right now that the graphics are awful, that what are they even supposed to be? Why are we shooting these two rectangles, these little squares? That looks like an egg. But it's a remake of a Atari game, so it's working within those limitations. Um, now, it probably is getting quite noisy for you listening, but there isn't really any benefit to not just holding down fire. Um, if anything, it seems to be a safer way of playing the game, because you're just going to hit everything. I'll try not to do it though, because it is probably quite loud. So, there's a lot of colour flickering in this game. Um, I guess, is there, if there is people out there actually suffer from epilepsy, maybe avoid this one. <laughs> but, um, I don't have that problem, fortunately. So, each level, it adds another enemy in. So, I'm on level two at the moment, and you can see I've got two of these little square things to shoot at. Oh, there we go, level three, and traditionally, as always, I die immediately. So you can see level three, I've got three things to shoot at. Now, being an old, old school arcade style game, the game starts to ask a lot of our reflexes and our speed and coordination um, because it ends up where there's quite a lot going on on the screen. You've got the mothership at the top firing things at you. When you shoot an alien, they respawn and they often respawn on top of your ship. Now, so that it feels somewhat fair, you can kind of see where they're going to reappear. There's like kind of lines tracking their movement. So it doesn't feel too frustrating if you um if you do get hit. Um it's usually your own fault. <laughs> um now an interesting kind of addition to the game is that interesting kind of pulsing notes in the background. Um I don't think this is in the Atari version of the game, but I like the presence of it. You'd often get arcade games from this period with really bizarre uses of the sound. Um, you know, you'd have, like... It creates a sense of urgency. It's, it's, it's very simple music, in a way. It certainly creates a mood. Um, yeah, old, ar old arcade games would often use kind of sound in that way. Not trying to create music as such, but just to kind of... You know, it's like a pulsing, like an alarm sound almost, just to kind of like get you into the mood of things, I suppose. So, it's a pretty short game. Games are pretty short. The gameplay is fast. Um, obviously, with it being a part of such an old game, we are limited to how many projectiles we can have on screen at once. Um, so most of the time, this means our ship fires quite slowly. But you'll see, as I get close to the edge of the screen, I can fire faster because it despawns. Um, so, yeah, once you get used to that kind of rhythm, 
the game's pretty fun. Um, it feels a little bit unfair for this to have been rated as the worst <laughs> Defender clone on the Atari, because, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of Defender, but this seems pretty good, this. It'd be nice if there were some power-ups, maybe. Um, I don't know if Defender had power-ups. So I've, I've played it maybe once or twice, a long time ago, on MAME, which I, you know, totally got legitimately and above board. But, no, I think this is a pretty fun little arcade game, this. The, um, the sounds that are in there are pretty charming in their own kind of 1982 way. And reading um, some of the developer um, Bruno's posts, he seems very interested in old school retro games and gaming. And I think this is a pretty good... This is a pretty good um, example of such an old school, old school kind of game. So yeah, um, if you like the look of this, if you want to play old school games, if you want to feel like a, an arcade master when you um, don't die every 10 seconds like I do, then try out this game because I think you might like it. I certainly do like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a different one this because I'm not just sort of rating the game, or I'm not sort of just talking about the game in and of itself because it's a remake, so, you know, there's limitations that are part of making the remake. You know, the graphics, I mean, you know, our ship is about, what is it, seven pixels? Maybe a bit more than that, about, not many. <laughs> and it's just, some, it's just a kind of wedge shape, isn't it? But, it's a remake. All the colour cycling, I bet the Atari, um, I bet that was a real common feature of Atari games. Um, it certainly gives it a retro feel, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll play one more game because this is quite a lot of fun. But then I think I'll just have to just finish off my coconut berry drink on my own because, yeah. You've probably seen enough of this game to make a decision on whether you want to play it or not. I would recommend it. Because I like this sort of games. Hmm. So yeah, pretty quick video today. But it's a pretty short game. A lot of fun though. Um, yeah. Star Gunner by uh, Bruno Gillet. I do apologise for mispronouncing that. I assume I mispronounced it. Anyway, Star Gunner on Pico 8 check it out. Um, I'll put links below which you've probably noticed by now. I could only find this on the Pico 8 website. I couldn't find it on itch or anything. Um, but you can play it on there. As always, I'm playing the game through Splore. You can search it on Splore. And yeah, um, as, a, as an aside, um, the developer, Mr. Well, Bruno, I'm not going to try and do that name again. Um, he's got a really funny YouTube channel, which you should check out as well. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video um, as much as I enjoyed Coconut Red Bull. In fact, I hope you enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Coconut Red Bull. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon.